One of the things that Ron DeSantis said in a town hall this week was that it might feel good to Republicans to vote for you and support you in the primary. But he felt they shouldn't leave the general election, potentially up to 12 jurors, in a D.C. court. What do you say to him about that? Well, it's a witch hunt by its uh, weaponization, if you look at it, its election interference by uh, Biden, because he can't win it fair and square, so he's doing that. Former President Donald Trump dismissing the impact his legal battles could have on his presidential campaign as he is due back in a Manhattan courtroom for closing arguments in his civil fraud trial today. Now, Trump's legal team asked to delay this in light of the death of his mother-in-law. The judge refused. Yeah, the judge also says, I assume that Mr. Trump will not agree to the reasonable, lawful limits I have imposed as a precondition to giving a closing statement. Therefore, he will not be speaking in court tomorrow. Former President Trump's attorney, Alina Haba, joins us now. Alina, good morning to you. Trump wanted to speak in court today. The judge said no. How big of a deal is this? Well, initially, we had just asked, could we please postpone today. His mother-in-law clearly just died, and he would have liked to have been with his family. The judge said no. Why? Uh, um, his reasoning was uh, something I can't get into, but ridiculous. It, you know, there's security. We have to pay for I don't know. Uh, the most security that gets paid for is the Secret Service that comes with the president that has to get disrupted, fly in, fly out. But uh, they have no problem wasting taxpayer dollars for the last three months. So I don't understand that reasoning. Uh, he required him to come in when his family is grieving. That's number one. Number two, the president, as a defendant, wanted to put words on the record and say what he had to say in terms of his closing. Uh, he has a right to get up and speak. He is a defendant. The judge said, oh, OK, but we're going to restrict that speech again. Now, remember, this is a judge that put a gag order on me, on the president, all the lawyers. And um, and we're dealing with that every day. So, the you know, the president wouldn't speak. And I, I would never have him speak in, under those circumstances. It should be clear. It's one thing to limit closing arguments to the information and evidence presented at trial. That's a rule that everybody needs to follow all all lawyers. But how much further did the judge order go beyond that in limiting what Donald Trump could say? Effectively, he didn't want him to litigate the ugly parts of the case. He didn't want Donald Trump to say a lot of things that we would be saying. Now, I'm not sure why, because if you don't have him say it, I'm going to say it. And I'm a pretty big loud mouth myself. So, <laughs> you know, he has a right. And I think we're seeing this consistently across a lot of these cases. They gag him. They tell him you can't publicly say it. They say you can't even say it when you're at home on True Social. You can't say it on Twitter. Imagine free speech being completely slashed, not for a normal person, never mind us, but for the leading candidate of the Republican Party. It's so obvious what they're doing. I'm tired of it. And I think the American people are really getting tired. Could I just make one quick follow up? So basically, sure. let's say this was the closing yeah. that you are going to read. Basically, they're saying Donald Trump could not read the exact same thing. That's right. They're saying exactly that. Wow. OK, so there is also this situation unfolding in Georgia. Um, Fulton County DA Fannie Willis is being accused of being in a ro romantic relationship with the prosecutor that she selected for the election interference case. And now Donald Trump is saying that the whole case should be dismissed. This relationship doesn't look good, could be embarrassing if it's true, but is it strong enough to have the case dismissed? And if so, why? Sure. I think it is. Uh, let me explain to you why. I'm happy to. So if you have a prosecutor get brought onto a case and that prosecutor is brought on for the sole purpose of selective prosecution, which is what we, we see here, you're targeting somebody, you bring in your buddy. I say, hey, Fox News, come on with me. We're going to go get CNN. OK, that is not OK, because there are rules of ethics. There are judiciary canons that we're all supposed to follow. All these things are not OK. More importantly, they took taxpayer dollars, used them towards this case and then um, funneled money. This man was paid, I think, a million dollars, something yeah, like yeah, that. Nearly a million. All right. So so imagine a world where I team up with, uh, you know, think of some of the biggest people yeah. you could think of. Yeah. I team up with them. I then go in and attack Biden. You're telling me that's OK? Okay, on yeah, the taxpayer okay. dollar. Yeah. I asked you a big question with 30 seconds remaining. I'm yeah. so sorry to do it. Okay. Thank you so much for joining us. You we appreciate it. it. Thank Fox you. and Friends starts right now. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.